we're good where we're standing. We're thankful this morning that you have decided to worship with us by way of television, uh, Facebook, and YouTube, and even TikTok. We uh, are blessed to know that God has given us another day, another day not only to live, but another day to worship him in spirit and in truth. This morning we'll be dealing with um, 1 Samuel 16, verse number 7. Uh, as God looks in, he peeps in at the heart, part 2. This morning, before we get started, I asked Brother Brooks uh, to pray for me, especially this morning, um, as I was told that uh, someone said that I offended them last week and don't want to do that, don't know who it was, but God knows and he, he knows their heart and my heart. Amen. And so I'm not like some preachers that would say, if I sin, I say, I have sin. Come short of the glory of God. I want to ask Brother Brooks to pray on my behalf. Every once and again, each one of us need public prayer and private prayer. Amen. This morning, we are going to do a public prayer for God's manservant. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of all things that's in the world, all things that are good, I petition you this morning in a prayer for courage and steadfastness. In our minds, we are always thankful for your son, Jesus the Christ, who is our example of courage and steadfastness. We are thankful that your ears are attentive to our prayers. We are cognitive that you are attentive to us because Jesus please you. And we are elated that you love us enough to have sacrificed him for us. I petition you this morning on behalf of your man servant, Brother Herbert Moore, who have always used your word to guide him when his when counseling and teaching, with discernment through the wise use of scripture and faith in you. I pray that he will be protected from the effects of sinful or negative attitudes that he encounters as he counsels and preaches. Mm -hmm. Lift up his heart and hands as he uses them to glorify you and to edify the saints that he serves. Mm -hmm. I pray that each member who have been entrusted in his care will receive it with love, joy, and thanksgiving as a blessing from you. Father, I pray that each of us would think things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report about each other, including the preacher. Mm -hmm. I pray that he, that the peace of God will be a God, a watcher, a protector mm -hmm. of our hearts when we speak about each other. Mm -hmm. Help each of us to always be encouraging we're fervently loving each other out loud on purpose, with purpose, and according to your eternal purpose. We thank you always for your Holy Spirit. And God, I said some words, but as your word tells me, I know not what to pray for, but I know what's in my heart. And I will yield to the Holy Spirit to tell you what those words mean. Thank you for Brother Moore. Thank you for his service and thank you for his family. Guide and bless him this morning as he stand before uh, your children to proclaim your holy and divine word. Forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to sing this morning uh, uh, 712. Jesus is coming soon. Please stand. Uh, 712, Jesus is coming soon. Uh, 
So, so thank you for Brother Brooks. Um, he does a wonderful job downstairs. I was downstairs a few minutes ago, and they was telling him a good job he was doing. I said, don't pump his head up too much. <laughs> but he, we, we want to encourage, we want to encourage all those that are listening at this point to come. You have to visit that class. He does a wonderful job. Amen. Uh, you have to visit that class. Amen. Like Brother uh, Brown used to say, he said, before you leave, before you leave Earth, he, he, he used to say, always say, come by Richmond. Before you leave Earth, come by Church of Christ Atlanta Airport Amen. and come to that class. Amen? <laughs> 712. Trouble sometimes, so here, feeling in heart with fear, freedom we all hold dear. Now say, stay, humble your heart to God, save from the chastening rod, seek the way pilgrim brought, Christians away. My Jesus is coming soon, morning or night. Night or noon, men will meet their dooms. The trumpets will sound, and all of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the sky, just going where no one died. Heaven were bound. Love us so many go, losing their home of gold. This in God's word is told, he but abound. When the signs come to pass, here in the end at last, this in God's word is past. Comforts will sound. My Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will make their dooms. The trumpets will sound. And all of the dead shall rise. Righteous men in the sky just go on where no one dies in the word bound. Troubles will soon be all happy forevermore. When the sun on that shore, safe from all care, just rising up in the sky, till this world's world goodbye. Feel we reading. We'll fly, trophy will share. My Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will make their dooms, the trumpets will sound. And all of the dead shall rise, righteous men in the sky just go where no. One that ever were found. Let us pray. I have the grace of Father. And once again, we give thanks for all the blessings you have put upon us. We thank you, Allah, for allowing us to be here this morning. I come to your house to worship you in the same praying to your name. And do it then according to thy will in spirit and in truth. Amen. We pray, O Lord, continue to be with each every member from scratch to live a life of you. And we pray, O Lord, that we let our light shine before man, that we may see all good work and glorify you in heaven, that one day they will be saved. We pray, O Lord, for those who are sick, continue to bless them, give them strength and their help, and be with those who are going through troubled times in their life. We pray, O Lord, especially those who have lost loved ones. We pray, O Lord, be, continue to be with us all. That we go into worship, worship service, that we do everything uh, according to that name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First lesson is going to be hymn number page two. (coughs) 
Once again, first lesson is page two. Have it, let's sing. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died in is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine glory. Please bind us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered all night. Hallelujah, thine glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne us our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the God of all grace, who has brought us and sought us and guided our ways. Hallelujah, thine glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May he so be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine glory. Revive us again. Amen. Our next hymn be number hymn 148. One four eight. Have it, let's sing. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. And I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. And he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord. And I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. And he keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. And he keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. And he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord. And I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. And he keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. And he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again and i keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again and i keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again and he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord. And I keep 
falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Amen. Before scripture reading in prayer goes to him number five, six, seven. Once again, before scripture reading and prayer, five, six, seven. Have it. Let's sing. Restore my spirit, Lord. I need restore, Lord. You know that my heart is weary. Please help me, dear Lord, where I stand in need of more strength from your word. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, though restore my soul. Revive the fire, Lord, deep in my soul. Won't you, Lord, stir my desire to work in your fold with light in my heart, dear God, your zeal grown cold. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, though restore my soul. Renew my courage sore, it needs restore. Yes, it does, for my cup is empty. Refill it, dear Lord, where we place all down same fear with faith so bold. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, or restore my soul. Restore my spirit, Lord, I need restore. Lord, you know that my heart is weary. Please help me, dear Lord, where I stand in need of more strength from your word. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, don't restore my soul. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is taken from 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, verse 6. 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, verse 6. Uh, Verse 6 and 7. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliah and said, Surely the Lord anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see, see as man see. For man look at the outward appearance, but the Lord look at the heart. Amen. May the Lord have a blessed upon the reading of scripture. Let us all stand as we go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Well, heaven and grace of Father, which in heaven, holy be your name. We come to you this morning to say thank you. For well, you have been so good to us, especially by sending your son Jesus to die on a cruel cross for the sins of the world. Amen. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank your love for waking up from our bed to see a new day that we've never seen before. Amen. We know it's by your will that we are here this morning. We pray, O Lord, that you continue to be with us as we strive to live a life for you. And Lord, we come to you in prayer and supplication for those who are sick. We pray, O Lord, for Sister Brenda Owen, mother, who is dealing with water on her, heart, on her lungs and also having heart problems. We pray, O Lord, for Sister Fitch, who is having high blood pressure problems. And we pray, O Lord, that we continue to pray for Sister Comley, who had her foot and leg appetite. We pray, Lord, that you be with these souls, Lord. It be your will 
comfort and strength of their spirit. But we know we all know our physical body will decrease as long as we live. And we pray, Lord, that you'll be with those who are going through trials in their life, those who are dealing with situations that sometimes they can't solve. But we know we can always come to you in prayer. And we pray, Lord, for those, especially lost loved ones, those who are in bereavement at this time, my Lord, continue to comfort and strengthen them also, Lord, knowing that you are there for them, and that we all can look towards you, for we know our help comes from which is from above. And we pray, Lord, that you be with Brother Moore as he continues to preach to a dying, sick world, and also to encourage us as we continue to strive and do the thing that you want us to do in spreading the gospel to the world. Forgive us our sin, O Lord, for we all have fallen short of our glory, and we pray, O Lord, that through your word and your Holy Spirit that will help us to deal with the temptation of Satan. We pray, O Lord, continue to give us strength also in, the, in our weak area, and that we can rely on each other as brothers and sisters when we are down, that we can encourage one another. As we go into the lesson, Lord, we pray, O Lord, you be with us, guide and direct us, for we sing praise to your name, we give you the honor and the glory, and worship you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> the next lesson we're going to number 753, 753. 753. Once again, next 11 is going to sing 753. Have it, let us sing. Tempting and try will off made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long while there are others living about us. Never molested, though in the wrong. I said, Father alone will know all about it. I said, Father alone will understand why. Don't hear my brother live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Faithful till death is our loving master. A few more days to labor when we towards the road we'll and then seem as nothing. As we sweep through the, the beautiful gate, I say, Father, I know we'll know all about it. I say, Father, I know we'll understand why. So cheer up, my brother, and live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. When we see Jesus coming in glory, when he comes from him, his home in the sky, then we shall meet him and in that bright mansion. And we'll understand it all by and by. I said, Father, alone will and know all about it. I said, Father, alone will understand why. So cheer up, my brother, I live in the sunshine. 
we'll understand it all by and by. I say, Father alone will know all about it. I say, Father alone will understand why. So cheer up, my brother, and live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Amen. Please mark your invitation song, the hymn number 674. 674, song invitation, 674, and then Brother Morgan sings a song before he comes up. Psalm 470, 470. Uh, please stand, 470. Victor and Jesus. I heard an old, old story of how the Savior came uh, from glory, uh, how he gave his life uh, on Calvary to save a rest like me. I heard about his groaning, uh, of his precious blood atoning. Uh, uh, then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory! In Jesus, my Savior forever, uh, he sought me uh, and bore me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere yeah, I knew him, and all my love is due him. Uh, he plunged me uh, to victory uh, beneath the crimson flood. I heard about a mansion uh, is built for me uh, in glory. Uh, and I heard about the street of gold uh, beyond the crystal sea, uh, about the angels singing uh, and your redemption story. Uh, and some sweet day I sing of them the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever. Uh, he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere yeah, I knew him, and all my love is due him. Uh, he punched me uh, to victory beneath the crimson blood. Amen. Please be seated. As we look at part two this morning, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 7 and following, where God peeks in, he looks at the heart. Oft time, and we can say this true about certain people, they say, charge that to my mind and not to my heart, because you know my heart. And God does. He, he looks at the heart, but that song that we often sing, if my heart is right, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name, if my robe is white. And so God requires us to keep our hearts right before him. Our hearts must be right before God and our fellow man. Amen. And so here we see a man after God's own heart. It is verse number six in First. Samuel chapter 16, and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord anointed is before him. It was one of the sons of Jesse, David's brother, that outwardly you would say this must be the one that God has chosen. Even off time when we choose our mates, you know, people say, y'all look good together. Well, what does it look like when you don't look good together? Amen? <laughs> right, Curtis? You and Reba look good together. <laughs> and if you marry somebody else, to somebody else, uh, they would say, Curtis, you, you all look good together. Reba married somebody else, y'all look good together. 
Y'all define that for me. Yeah. <laughs> we all are good, good together no matter who we're with. Because that's the one we love, that's the one we have chosen. We look good together. In verse number 7, in First Samuel chapter 16, verse number 7, here it goes. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his statue. Of time, military men were very tall men. Our Secretary of Defense is a very tall man. And so that makes him look leadership ready, if you will. But if his heart is not right, he's not leadership ready. Because he, I have refused him, I have rejected him. Sometimes people are rejected and they don't even know they've been rejected. Young people, you know one of the scariest things about dating is being rejected. Remember, he that finds a wife, find it for good things. And so we as men, we go looking and it's hard to get rejected. It's painful to get rejected. That's why a lot of men have missed out on a lot of good women because they're afraid to approach them. We need to give a lesson in approaching, right? <laughs> afraid to approach them. Afraid to get rejected. But it's all right to get rejected. At least you had the courage to move forward. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. I remember in Matthew chapter 8, it is where Jesus, he looked at them through the eyes of compassion. See, God looked through the eyes of compassion. The child of God, once we obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, we gain this new heart like David, of course, God gave him a new heart according to 1 Samuel chapter 14, uh, 15 and 34. God gave him a new heart. What is this heart of God came from? Came from God. And, and once we obey the gospel, we get this new heart. We become a new creature. We get this new heart. And oh, what a wonderful heart we get because in Romans chapter 6, verse number 17, this is what Paul says. From the heart, when you obey the gospel, from the heart, you have obeyed this form of doctrine. When you, when you obey the, God, the word of God from the heart, you give God your whole heart. And you love him with your whole heart. Matthew 22, verse number 37. The, what is the greatest commandment? That is to love God all that heart, soul, and mind. And here, for a man look of where? Man look of on the outer appearance. The outer appearance. Well, we can't help what we've been born with. This is how we were born. And I, like that says, always somebody for, from some, for someone. Isn't that right? And the main thing, if you live right and you do right, people will look at more than your outward appearance. They'll look at your heart. But the Lord looketh on the heart. Saul was, remember we said last week, Saul was a disaster for himself and those that were around him. This is why sometimes, you know, our sin not only affects us, it affects people that are around us. In Romans chapter 1, remember verse number 30 and following, it says one thing to sin, but to pull other people into your sin, it's another situation. The child of God must live above reproach. Because people are watching our lives. They may not read the Bible, but they're reading your life. And so, Saul, in like servant, in like the servant in Matthew chapter 25, remember we mentioned that, that he hid his talent. He did not do, he would not, he did not obey God to do what he, God wanted him to do. God has invested. So had invested so much in Saul and Samuel. This is why he was weeping. So and he was so grieved because he had invested so much in Saul. Like we invest so much in our children, and when they come up disappoint us, it's a sad commentary. And so Saul, of course, he was a religious man, but David was a regenerated man. Remember last week we said in. Tyler chapter 3, verse number 4 and following that, that we're regenerated. When we obey the gospel, we, we're at one point, God meet us where we are. 
<clears throat> That's what he does. He meets us where we are. He takes us where we are to be. And we just keep growing in the Lord. We keep getting better in the Lord because God, we, we, we just keep studying his word. Faith comes how? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. We have the mindset of David, remember Psalm 119, verse 10 and 11, where David said, With thy whole heart, did y'all hear that? With thy whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wonder from thy commandments. The word have I hid. Where, David? In my heart. Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 5 and following. Remember, uh, the Hebrew writer says, The word of God won't be on tablets or stones anymore. Here it goes, Sister Jones, it'll be written where? In your heart. We have the word of God. Done. And so as we have, have, have the word of God, we meditate on God's word, and it's in our hearts. And we meditate on it day and night. It's a beautiful thing to know that we don't have to re rely on a priest somewhere. We don't have to rely on the Pope even nope. to rightly divide the word for us. Right. Right. God has given us all things pertaining to life and God, and it's the word of God. So we're regenerated, and we keep working on ourselves every day. None of us have arrived. David would be in heaven, but he would not be without sin. He would not be a person without sin. That's why we all must make sure we're not defined by our sinful action, that we must repent of our sins. We can't let anything, anybody keep us from going to heaven. Heaven is our home, and that's what, that's what we need to be focused on. And so he could not live long from God. You know, when you love someone, you can't live that long from them. When, you know, when we were in the military and different people in the military, right, either you travel for school, you know, you, you go to a certain college and, and, you know, some students choose to be away from home, which is good, away from their own city so they can grow. That's wonderful. Don't want mom and daddy peeping in every once in a while <laughs> when they get ready to drop in. We just dropping in. It's good. Sometimes to get away so you can grow. But here... It was hard for him to be away from God in a sinful fashion. He longed for God. That's another reason why he was a man after God's own heart. He, he longed from God, for, uh, for God. And he realized, even in our life, we realize in James chapter 4, verse number 7 and following, if we draw nigh to God, he would draw nigh to us. It's a beautiful thing to just live a righteous life and every turn you make when you sin just repent and get it right just keep living for God Thank you. Thank you. and you'll see how God will bless you like never before yeah. it's the same David remember in, in Psalm 84 uh, verse number 10 11 where it says the Lord God is a son and shield he give grace and glory no good thing what he will hold for them that do what walk up rightly walk up rightly those that do God's will 1 John chapter 1, verse number 7, that's walk in the light. He is in the light. See, we walk in the light, walk in the light of God's word. His word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our pathway. Just keep walking in the light as he is in the light. You know what you are? A Christian because you know when you're a Christian because you're miserable when you're in sin. Until you repent. You're miserable. Mm -hmm. And thank God we have a conscience. Romans chapter 2 verse number 11 and following. Our conscience will accuse you, you know, of verify the things which you're doing. Your, your conscience is so important. It's important in life. First John 3, verses 4 and following. No one who abides in him keep on sinning. No one, John says. Because we long to be right with God. And we don't want to keep on sinning. And, and we don't want to, if someone living together with someone and, and it's not right, we don't want to keep doing that every day of your life. You know, you're walking in the door and walking out of the door, you know you're still in sin. Some watching now, preacher, anything wrong with that? Yes, it is. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. <laughs> James chapter. 
for verse number 17, for him to know to do good, do it not to him. It is sin when we know we need to do the right thing. Oh, you're judging me. Preacher, don't do that to me. Did you read in the Bible? Matthew chapter 7, verse number 1 and following that we're not to judge one another. But did you also not read in John 7, verse number 24, the Bible says, judge not by appearance, but righteous judgment. And this is what God is doing here. He's not judging. He's not choosing from appearance, but he's choosing from the heart. They were looking for a king, but God was looking for a heart. The Lord help us to always consider the heart. No one who keeps on sinning, 1 John chapter 3, verse number 4 through 9, has either seen him or know him, John says. How can you say that you, you love God when you just keep doing what you want to do? Well, it's just a habit. And I have, well, we can break a habit with the power of God. We can't do it ourselves. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 13. I can do how many things? All things through him, which gives me strength. What strengthens me? So David comes back and repent after he had sinned. That's what he did. But Saul keeps sinning. Saul keeps sinning. Saul keeps sinning and keeps doing that which is wrong. Kind of remind me of Acts chapter 5. Remember Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira. When they lied about the potion that they had given. When in Acts chapter 4, remember, in verse number 32 and 5, they gave to those that had need in the church. They were free-hearted. They, they cared for one another. When one, one, one mourned in, in Romans chapter 15, verse number 15, the other mourned and the other weep. But when they rejoiced, we all rejoiced together with the body of Christ. In Acts chapter 5, remember, Ananias and Sapphira, they thought they had gotten away with well, God knows everything. Why? Because God looks at the heart. And this is what they, the apostles say to him. They said, why have you lied to God? And then it goes on to say, next verse, you have lied to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God, they're one. So when we sin, we, we not only sin against that person, we sin against God. Genesis chapter 6, remember Genesis chapter 6, verse number 5, and final imagination of man's heart with evil continuously. And uh, it, hurts, it, ple- it hurt God, it grieved his heart that he had made man. You know how sometimes it sounds grieve you that you wind up in this situation. But thank God we have hope because God knows our heart and we must get out of it as soon as possible. You all know how it is. Repentance is like that. You know, uh, I know most of us are afraid of snakes. If not, may, maybe you, you know, like on some of those shows, they have those snakes all around the neck and everything, big snakes. And uh, repentance is like this. You see a snake in your path. You don't keep walking. You, you turn and go back the other way. That's what repentance is. So, well, it's done a 365 degree. No, you back in the same place, you do that. <laughs> 180 degrees, right? And so, think about repentance the same way. You want to turn from wrong and turn to right. Yeah, exactly. Because you keep going in that path, James gives us the process of sin. James chapter 1, verse number 12 and following, you know, when sin is conceived, it brings. Lust is conceived, it brings about sin, and sin, if, if you keep, if you stay there, it brings about death. Where are you in life now in reference to your sins? Have you repented of your sins, or have you just say, well, I'll wait until another time, and I'll wait until uh, I have more strength to get myself together. God will give you all the strength you need if you Amen. ask for it. Right, right, right. Ask God to strengthen you. You all know what it is about habit, a habit. Uh, you do it s- s- 21 days, I'm told. You do something 21 days, it becomes a habit. So that means I don't need to start smoking. Y'all getting quiet on me. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Keep going. That means I don't, I don't need to start drinking. Right. Mm-hmm. That means I don't need to start cursing. But it also means I need to start studying. If I study 21 days, uh, you know, during that time period, I should be able to just keep it going. Mm-hmm. Exercise the same way, isn't it? Right. You get on that track, you do one mile, two miles, and you just keep it going consistently. 
you find yourself, your body yearning for it. You same with the word of God. You start studying the word of God consistently, you'll, start, you'll find your heart yearning for it. Yearning for this food. And then, but David, he repented and came back Saul, on the other hand, he was a religious man and not a regenerated man. Saul, he kept on sinning and just kept on sinning. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse number 1, Samuel, he's grieved, of course. And God tells him to get away from your grief, move on from it, and maybe something this morning you're grieving about. It could be something that happened in the past, it, it, no matter what it is, it could be something, but God can fix it. And we're not saying, just go cold turkey right quick, it's going to be all right. Sometimes it takes time. It does. But somewhere along the line, you need to ask God for strength to pull you up out of it. Because it can destroy your life. It can cause you to be depressed. It can, it can cause you to be choked, worry. You wind up worrying. And God, God tells us not to worry. And if God has told us what to do, that means if we do the opposite, that's sin. So worry is a sin. You can be concerned, but leave, put it in the hands of God. Once you put it in the hands of God, leave it there. And so we often ask, what could I have done different? What could I have done different in this situation? And, and, you know, I learn from my mistakes. I don't know about you. And not only do I learn from my mistakes, I learn from the mistakes of others. Like one man said, while y'all are praying, he's watching. I'm checking things out. Samuel is on a secret mission here, though. First Samuel chapter 16, he's on a secret mission. Uh, he, he never used the word king. Now, he's going to anoint uh, David. He's on a secret mission. Don't need, he didn't need Saul to know about it or anything like that because later he would manifest himself as a king, but not now. See, only priest was anointed back then. And then the first anointed was the king uh, Saul. And then so David really didn't feel anything about it. In verse number four, people immediately afraid when they see Samuel come to in 1 Samuel 16, verse number 1 and following, and then Jesse presents his son Eliab in verse number 6 and following. He, of course, well, like a rock star, we missed last week, he was, you know, he, he was the kind of person that, that anyone would gravitate to. And that's why Samuel thought that this would be the one. But God has chosen. Let me, let me give you this before I get too far. Look at 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians 1. And you must be careful how you gravitate toward the rich and the famous and the powerful. Remember, only a few are going to be saved. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 18, Look at verse 17. For Christ sent me not a, to baptize, but to do what? Preach the gospel, not with wisdom or words, with the, but lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. You know, people looking for this great speaker. One of the most effective preachers I know when I was in Greece with the brethren over there, got a chance to be at a lectureship over there for a whole week. Beautiful mountains, beautiful blue water, and awesome food there in Greece. Some of you love lamb, but over there is it really tastes like lamb. Amen. The preacher of the cross, the preaching of the cross, verse number 18, first Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is what? It is the power of God. That's what it is. <laughs> Some people say, preacher, you, that, that's crazy. All that, all that Bible, book, chapter, and verse, that's crazy. To the world, it's crazy. They want to hear some philosophy. But this is the power of God. Amen. The Romans have one verse, number 16, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but the power of God, there it goes. There's the power of God until all those that believe to the Jew first and also to the Greek. 
I want you to know that verse number 21, for after that, the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of what doing what? A philosophy. First Corinthians 1, verse number 21, the foolishness of philosophy. The, the foolishness of just, let's have a little talk. Let's don't have a Bible study. Let's have a discussion. Brother Bruce, you know this. Discussion and Bible study is two different things. It must be thus says the Lord. I got my opinion, you got your opinion. Then that's God's word. But after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them which believed. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. That's what we do. Unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jew and G Greeks, Christ, the, here goes now, the power of God. Christ, the power of God. And the wisdom of God, he is not on the power of God, but he is the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Some people think they come up with these jokes and everything and have people laughing. If God wants to come up with a joke, we'll laugh and we'll be laughing for years. Watch it now. Because <laughs> God is so powerful. Right. Wow. Yeah. But ye see, in verse number 26, you see our calling brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh how did not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called? Did y'all hear that? You know, Saul was this well-spoken man. You, you would say at one point, noble and mighty. But God is telling us here, not many of those people really called. And if you look at the, the list of the false teachers out there. A lot of them talking loud and saying nothing. Telling people what they want to hear. But God has chosen. Look at verse 27. 1 Corinthians 1, verse number 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised has God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught things that are. That no, here goes now, no flesh of glory in his presence. We are nothing. God is everything. Right. You don't boast as to uh, who, what you've done and who you are, all this kind of, these different things. Because that can change any time. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Remember we talked about last week and some people think they, they have it all together. They got the looks and everything. They got the billfold and the pocketbook and the looks. Well. <laughs> that can change any time. Yeah. You let a bad cold come upon you, the flu, and everything just start piling up. Let me ask you what's more important at that point. You're on your dying bed. What's more important than that? Than that? Than you get cast it. They're going to say, well, they really exercised, took care of them. They said, man, look at those muscles. <laughs> verse, seven, chapter four, uh, uh, verse number eight, remember what Paul says. He said, exercise profit little, but God is profit in all things. We must stay godly. We must stay spiritual. Right, right. Because all these things are going to pass away. Our looks and everything else is going to pass away. I'm so thankful that God looks at the heart and God does not leave us nor forsake us. He does not. When your looks pass away, you have people look another way when they pass away. Right? <laughs> you know. Find yourself my age on a king and that can come any time. People start looking the other way. I'm not consider uh, this person I'm considered, yeah, he's an old man, isn't he? It is an old man. That's an old man over there. You know? <laughs> but if God just continued to give me strength from within, listen at this now, the outward man perish, but the inward man renewed day by day. 
I might be getting old on the outside, but more wiser within in this spiritual realm. All of us, right? Those that hold on to God's unchanging hand. David. He was a good looking man. First Samuel chapter 16, verse number 12. He was a good looking man. May not have to hype or anything, but he was a good looking man. And those those that use that the wrong way, even women, you use that the wrong way, and you can find yourself in the world of sin. It's almost like riches sometimes can be a snare. First Timothy chapter 6, verse number 7 through 10. Remember having uh, food and raven, let it be content, he says. But, you know, those that are rich fall into a, a, a snare and situations. You know, some, you know, sometimes beauty, we missed the last word, beauty is only skin deep. And sometimes people think, you know, when you're younger, you feel like you can just ride that on out when you're younger until you get older. And then you realize that, hey, they're not looking at your beauty anymore. They're looking at your brains. So you need it both when you're growing up, right? Tell your children you need both. You need beauty and a brain. Right, right. I'm not talking about beauty and a beast. I'm talking about beauty and a brain. Right, right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> beauty and a beast. Yeah, he was a good-looking man. And that's why, you know, God at least give us at least one or two good qualities. Amen. I know he may have left Curtis and I out on a few, right, Curtis? Curtis, speak for yourself. <laughs> I want y'all to notice here, choosing spiritual leaders. See, I'll be leaving this stage one day, don't know when. But I say to congregations, choosing spiritual leaders, I say to this congregation, choosing spiritual leaders, there's some things you must consider. You must consider how does this person pray? How do they pray? I mean, what is their prayer life like? You know, as you ask them, what, what is your prayer life like? And then when you pray, remember James says when you pray, in James chapter 1, verse number 6 and 9, he said, he said pray believing a double-minded man is Unstable in all its ways. And God is saying, if you pray and you don't believe, don't even pray to me. Mm -hmm. Even when your children ask you for something, and they say, well, I'm going to ask mom and daddy anyway. I know they're not going to give it to me. I know I need it, but they're not going to give it to me. God, God will take care of our needs, and your parents will too. Now, I'm not promising you they will get you those $259 tennis shoes. <laughs> but, I, but I will promise that we'll get you some shoes. Amen? Amen. They get you what you need. Amen. Now, this is the third point. Choose a leader. Uh, does he enjoy being with his wife and family? That's important. Remember, the, the elders, it, it must be men that have faithful wives and children that must be able to teach and love us a good man because they watch in Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 17. They watch over your soul. First Timothy chapter 5, verse number 19 and following said, Do not lay hands on uh, anyone too soon. Sometimes we lay hands on people too soon when they're not qualified. Uh, when you look for a leader, you need to look for these certain qualities. And then this is another one. Can the leader weep and repent? Can the leader weep and repent? Jesus wept, didn't he? John chapter 14, John chapter 11, verse number uh, 30 through 35, the Bible says Jesus wept. David, he was a man after God's own heart. And we should be as Christians, people of God's own heart. They should not see a hardened Christian that this is the way it is and this is just the way it is and I don't care what y'all say. No, we, we must be a person after God's own heart. You know what we must realize also, sometimes we may not win an argument, but we may have won the soul. You won't win every argument. I won the elders when I became a preacher at Old National Church of Christ. We had elders there and, and um, one of the brothers he was way off on one of his belief on a point, a Bible point. And we, we talked to him in Bible class, and we went over book, chapter, and verse. No matter what we said, he still believed what he said. When the elder at the door we was talking, he said, no matter what he said, the Bible is still what he said, said what he said, <laughs> right? 
No matter what you say and I say, it's not, it's not who's right. It's what's right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the Bible is right. Thank you, thank you. And so here we see David had, he had these qualities. He had these wonderful qualities. If you're choosing a minister later on, don't know when that would be. Think about these qualities. Think about these qualities. It's like dating someone. The representative shows up. They give you the best for the first six. They say six months, but now I think it's about six years. <laughs> Watch it. So you must make sure that you look at those qualities. Look at the heart. Verse number eight. First Samuel chapter 16, verse number eight. The only son uh, introduced he, they, they went, they introduced all the sons of Jesse but one. Jesse calls him, he calls him the least. He calls him the least. His father looked at him that way. And even in Jesus' life, remember his parents, remember when he got lost at 12 years old, they said, your parents are looking for you. Jesus says, don't you know I must be about my father's business? And who's my mother? Who's my father? All those that do the will of, my, of God. So Jesse calls him, basically, he did not understand. He did not understand how God had anointed him already and, and, and God had chosen him. You know, it's, it's like when I go back to my hometown. You know, I'm the same person that they grew up with. They knew me as, you know, I, they used to call me Junior because back then, y'all know, y'all know they had, if you, your last name was Junior, they called you Junior, your home. And uh, I think Lisa called Morris, June, right, Lisa? Uh, and they get us mixed up sometimes. They say, okay, Junior Moore, Junior Willis. Junior, you know who you are, right, <laughs> man? <laughs> so, you're you not. You're not honored in your own hometown, amen? Right, <laughs> and so, uh, but his father, his father saw him as, you know, this, the least of them. Sometimes it breaks your heart. Sometimes even your parents don't look at you in the right way. Amen. They don't see anything in you. We must encourage our children. Remember, uh, we don't do this anymore. They used to say when, when, when um, uh, Sister Deborah and I was growing up, Deborah said, don't put, don't put you in my, the category of the year as you grew up. But when we were growing up, um, you know, uh, they used to say, they're just a bad boy. They're just a bad girl. And they were saying in front of them, what is that doing to them? They're allowing them to want to be bad. You name them bad, right? <laughs> you must be careful about that, Sister Hall. Isn't that right? You must be careful about that. You know, you need to make sure that you speak the right things in front of these children. If you keep saying that, they say, okay, they already lay me that way. I can come up in here bad. I can be bad. <laughs> but I want you to know this morning, God looks at the heart. God said, arise and anoint him, verse number 12. And so what distinguished David from, from his brother, what distinguished him from his brother, there are three things, if you take notes, that distinguished David from his brothers. The profile of a person God uses a new heart. The Lord has sought after the man after his own heart. We say, now, where do you get that heart, David? Where do you get that heart? You know, like you have a new pair of shoes. Where do you get those shoes? A woman have a new dress. Where do you get that dress? Where do you get that hat? And then, listen at this. First Samuel chapter 13, verse number 14. God gave him, he said, I've sought a man after God gave him that heart. He gave him that heart. First Samuel chapter 16, verse number 1, I have. Here it goes in, in verse number 1, First Samuel 16, verse number 1, I have provided for me a man, God provided, a man with a new heart. God gave him the heart he had provided for him. It's a wonderful thing to be chosen by God in our life. We all have been chosen by God. Why? First, that's on chapter Three, verse number 14 and following where we of course are called by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're listening to me now. You've been chosen by God. God wish that no one be lost. He wish that all men be saved. You've been chosen by God. Now what you have to do, he does not make us robots. 
You have to heed to the word of God. You must obey the gospel word, the word of God, the gospel of Christ. And let God change your heart to be a new creation. God changes us from a child. It's good to ask chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. We all obey God in our youth. It's so important that we raise our children up in the Lord, raise them up in the way that they should go from a child. You all know this about anything about children. Even the Catholics know this. At two years old, a child is 50% of what it's going to be the rest of their life. At five years old, the 85% of what it's going to be the rest of your life. And that, that's, that's not meaning that that's all they're going to learn. It's meaning that they have somewhat uh, have their foundation of who they're going to be. So it's our responsibility in the, those early years to raise them up right in the way that they should go. Obey God in your youth, Solomon says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. But Hebrews chapter 8, verse 11 and 13 the law of God would be written where? In, our, in the New Testament, the law of God would be written where? In our hearts, in our minds. It won't be on tablets. It won't be on tablets of stone, but it would be written in our hearts. Be written in our hearts. That's why can't nobody take it away. Can't nobody take your salvation away. We whine. We know we leave God. God does not leave us. And so here... We, 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 we hear so plainly the song, The Heart of Stone. Remember that song, The Heart of Stone? Say, Lord, I want to take away this heart of stone. If you have a heart of stone this morning, God wants to church your heart. In Isaiah 55, verse number 7 and following, in God's word, of course, would not come back to him void. Let it touch your heart. No preacher, you're stepping on my feet. I don't want to step on your feet. I want to step on your heart because God's word touches my heart. Right, right, right. Lord, help us to be touched by the heart. A few more points of lesson with yours. The equipping of a person God uses. He used new power. He gave, he gave David new power. In 1 Samuel 16, verse number 13. Look at 1 Samuel 16, verse number 13. The Bible says, we see here the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day on. From that day on. He was able to do some things. Like, like we, when we obey the gospel, we're able to do some things. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 13. I can do all things through Christ, which do what? Which strengthens me. That keep on infusing strength into me. David was able to do some things. What did he do, preacher? No, he killed the lion and he killed the bear. See, God, it's almost like God has given him a little bit of time, like God does in our lives. He gives us a little responsibility at the time. Remember, you be faithful of a few things in Matthew chapter 25, verse number 21 and following. I'll make you ruler over many. And something, I want this responsibility now. No, God knows you can't handle that now. I won't be a supervisor. No, just be a good employee up right now. And if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. God wants us to be faithful over a few things. You don't wake up and buy your child the first car. You buy them a brand new car. You give them a used car first. And see how they're going to be responsible. You don't even buy them one later on. You let them work and earn their own car at that point. Amen. I need to see you faithful over a few things. Well, I want to do this. I want to do that. Well, you got to start making your bed first. And doing things around the house. And then we'll talk about other things. Remember that commercial in the military? First thing, they teach you how to make, a, make your bed. And then uh, you're supposed to be able to throw a quarter and hit that bed. Drop it on bed. The quarter should be able to bounce up. Amen? Those been in the military. Now, why is this so important? The drill sergeant says on this commercial, he said, son, this is important because this is the first thing you need to do. No, the first thing you really need to do in the morning, wake up and pray. And the second thing you need to do is make your bed. <laughs> he 
said, this is the first, he said, this is the first accomplishment you're making that, that day. And so you need to get up. And when people get depressed sometimes, I talked to someone the other day, said her daughter was in bed for 30 days to pray. She didn't know she was really in bed for 30 days to pray until she went over there. That's a long time. And thank God she got up out of bed and went back to work. Thank God her job was still there. People get depressed. I know that. But we have to get up out of that bed, amen? amen? Thank God and praise God for what he has done. Now, I might be knocking on some doors when I say this. You don't walk around in your house all day and you're looking at a bed unmade. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> right, brother, brother? <laughs> that needs to be the first thing. That you do when you wake up in the morning. Oh, the second thing. The second thing. It's a sense of accomplishment, accomplishment, isn't it? Sometimes these little small accomplishments. That's why God He gave David these small accomplishments, and so you know you can handle the big things. You know, when I was a young preacher, I, I felt like, man, I'm ready for the job. I'm ready for the job. I got into the job. I said, oh no, I should have waited about five more years. Amen. <laughs> you know. But then it was on the job training. And only God saw me through. He had, to, he had to build them up for Goliath, that giant, remember? He had to build us up for giants in our lives. You know, even when you're dating, it's okay to get your heart broken one or two, one or two times because when that big heartbreak comes, you'll be ready. Please ask it. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse number 26. Ezekiel 36, verse number 26. The new heart and new spirit God gives. Regenerate a heart. New heart and new spirit. Those that are listening at this point, I want you to know it is found in 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 17. When you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, you become a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have been made new. New. New creation. Notice this. The gospel is getting to regeneration. It regenerates us, gives us the power of God, because the gospel gives us the salvation, deliverance to everyone that believes. Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse number 16, not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but the power unto God and to salvation to everyone that believes, to Jew first and also to the Greek. It is the power. That's what it does. It gives you the power to do what, preacher? It gives you the power to face temptation head on. 1 Corinthians 10, verse number 13. There's no temptation that has been given to you that is not just common to man. You're not the first one to have gone through this. For God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able, but he will provide an escape if you look for it. Then it gives us, the gospel gives us the power to forgive people. That's a good one, isn't it? You have the power to forgive people because the thing about it, because you know that God will not forgive you unless you forgive them. God has a check and balance system. You go around holding something against someone and don't forgive them. Guess what God is saying? You got a cloud over your head too. Better start forgiving people and think that it's only you going through this and that and, and they hurt me. You hurt people also. And some of y'all hurt people bad. Amen. Amen. Like me and Paul. Paul said, and I say like Paul. Paul said he's the chief of sinners. And so was I. The chief of sinners. But God saw his, he shed his grace upon us. And thank God for his grace. The experience of a person, as we come to a close, the experience of being a child of God, being a person of God's own heart, do y'all not know it's a struggle? If it wasn't a struggle, everybody would be doing it. That one a person called me, uh, told me, I appreciate my missing so much, Brother Curtis Robinson, father. Uh, he would often say, he said, homeboy, he said, now, he y'all complain about the business and everything. He said, he said, if if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Just shut up. <laughs> Amen. Amen, homeboy. Right? <laughs> it's 
If being married was easy, everybody would be doing it. Amen. Uh -huh. yeah. If then certain things were easy. But we can do all things through Christ where it strengthens us. But notice this now. It's a struggle. You know, Saul, Saul, he was, uh, Paul was, hate, um, David was hated and haunted by who? By Saul. It wasn't easy, but it was a struggle. David had to keep moving and moving, and, and he was trying to kill him. Do you not know Satan is trying to do the same for us? Just keep thief coming, not but to steal and to destroy. John chapter 10, verse number 10. Uh, he, he come not to uh, do nothing but to steal and to destroy, but he said, I come that you might have what? Life and have abundantly. Don't you think for one minute that Satan has let his hand off you. Satan is still after you. And he will not quit. Some of the highest points in your life, that's when Satan come at you. And, and you know, when, when you know God working on your behalf, Satan said, let me pull this, the trick out over here. Let, let me see what this distract you. Don't let it distract you. That's a trick. Right, right. It's a trick. And so Jesus suffered. He suffered the cross with, just like the David's apparel of Jesus David, he suffered that his same pattern, Jesus, he suffered, and we have that same pattern. In John, Luke chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus says, if you must deny yourself, right? Now, how often, Jesus, shall I deny myself? Once a month? No, he said, daily. Deny yourself daily. Take up your cross daily and follow me. It's a struggle, but God is in his fight with us. And then, you know, you, once you obey the gospel, I want you to know, and y'all heard what I said, you become clean. you are wash, all your sins are washed away. But you have to go back to the world. We're in the world, but not of the world. You know, it would be good if we, everything was just happy and glory like we're all here in this setting. Because we don't have the world in here. But Satan can easily sneak in here, amen. It'd be easy. We, it, we didn't have to go home. We just stayed like those early Christians did at one point. You know, you know, they was praising God, eating from house to house because, you know, because they had sold all the things that they had, and some had come way from a long distance. They didn't go back home because they had found the key to life, and we have found the key to life, haven't we? We have found the key to life, and that is serving God. You know, I tell this story, I told this down in LaGrange just a few weeks ago, about two weeks ago. Martin Luther King had gotten discouraged. And he, he was doing the I Dream, it was doing the I Dream of Dream, I Have a Dream speech, but it was before he did it, Mahala Jackson. They were there on the march on Washington, and he was, he got weary like we all do, and, and his sermon wasn't hidden. Everybody was tired, been walking along, and his sermon just wasn't doing it, just wasn't doing it at all. But he had preached, I have a dream, so many times. And Mahala Jackson, she led singing, she, she saw him proud of him preaching many times. And this particular time, they were very close, and she looks at him, she looked at the crowd, she see how the crowd was so restless, like some of y'all get sometimes. We need an urge to go by and just, wake up, wake up, we got watching this. <laughs> yeah. But the crowd had gotten restless, and the, you know, you can only take so much of sitting and listening to someone teach or preach, don't get me wrong. And she saw that. And he was going on and on on the sermon, but she had heard that I have a dream speech over and over again. She knew that that would wake people up. And then Mahala Jackson said this. She looked over at him. She said, Martin, tell him, tell him about the dream. Tell him about the dream. And then he kicks in. I have a dream that one day this nation would rise up and live out the true meaning of his creed. He kept saying, I have a dream. You know the dream we can tell people about? Tell them about Jesus. <laughs> tell them about 
about Jesus. I mean, the story about Jesus, how he loves us so, and, and he died by our sins. And uh, one day we will we'll see Jesus if we live right. Tell him about Jesus. Tell him about that dream. When you get discouraged, tell them about Jesus. You start thinking about Jesus. Amen. It's a struggle out here. Deny yourself every day. We go back to the world once we obey the gospel. Precious of the world once we even leave here. They're precious of marriage. Some brothers and sisters do not have a spouse that are members of the Lord's church. I have some preacher friends in the Lord's church that Spouse is not a member of the church, and it breaks their heart. They've been trying to teach them for year in and year out. But I'm so glad the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 5, verse number 10, that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. We all must give an account of ourselves, right? Your wife can't save you. Your husband can't save you. Your friends can't save you. Then when you go back into the world, even in a school place, in the workplace, that's a struggle. You're in the world and now other world. You have to deal with people and you have to deal with situations. But guess what? God has put you there for a purpose. You're there to let your light shine. You're there so they can see your heart. And then they want to ask you, what do you believe? Because I believe you have a heart after God. But God is to be honored, right? He is to be honored in all of this because he gives us our hearts. He gives us our hearts. Don't let no one take away your joy. Keep your heart right with God. And every time I get discouraged, I have a halfway good wife watching there, right? I have a wonderful wife. And there she'll text me and say, tell them about the dream. Tell them about the dream. And I've been preaching this dream ever since I was 23 years old. When you get discouraged, tell them about the green dream, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad God looks at your heart and my heart. Amen. If my heart is right, he will answer, right? Amen. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Amen. We're going to stand at this time on our feet. You have heard the word of God. Let God touch your heart this morning. And know that he loves you. You won't always get it right. I don't. But he'll make it right. Mm -hmm. It's not who you are, but whose you are. Mm. I'm so glad that you and I, those who have the gospel, belong to God. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I love God so much. I want to make it to heaven. I want to make it to heaven. Sister Jones, you remember Sister Pansy, she was not with us anymore. She died in the Lord. She would say, Brother Moore, I just, uh, back then I have a little fan like I have now. I just swell a lot. And she said, I just need one of those handkerchiefs because I'm going to ride all the way with you to heaven. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to get there. We're going to get to heaven. Amen. Miss her so much. Been blessed with so many wonderful members like you. Preach the word and love the people. Tell them about the dream. Let's stand and sing a song of invitation. 674. I have decided to follow Jesus. I am decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. 
Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back, no turning back. Amen. Prepare hearts and minds for the Lord's Supper. We're going to see number 382. Three eighty two, pair for the Lord's Supper, three eighty two. Have it let's say Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go? Why did he choose a lowly birth? Because he loved me so. He loved, he loved me so. Me so, Jesus loved me so. He loves me so, Jesus gave his precious life for me, for me, because. He loved me so. Why did he drink a bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why on the cross be lifted up, lifted up, because he loved me so. He loved, he loved me so, me so. Jesus loved, Jesus loved me so. He loved me so, Jesus gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Amen. Amen. We come to the portion of the service where we are to partake of communion. And Acts chapter 20 verse 7 gives us a clear illustration on when we are to partake of communion. And it reads, And upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. The manner in which we are to partake of communion is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 30. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance for me. May I have Brother Powell to pray for the bread. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that we got around your table. And the first day of the week, we pray, O Lord, that we give thanks to you for what you have done for us and sacrifice your body on the cross. We pray, O Lord, that we take this emblem which represents your body on the cross, that we have taken a man of these pleasing and separate nice fight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I have Brother Brooks to pray for the cup. Let us pray. Holy God, you are so good to us that we don't even know how to appreciate it. But on the first day of the week, you have given us an opportunity to not only show among ourselves, but to the world, that we believe in your son, Jesus Christ, his shed blood that's precious and powerful and that it was promised in your word. Thank you for that blood that washes away all our sins and that guide and direct us. And thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your love 
And thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus that while we were yet sinners, he died for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Has anyone been overlooked? This concludes the Lord's Supper. For as often as, I, as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discern the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Also we come to the portion of where we are to give as we prosper. And clear illustration on when we are to give is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 in the verses 1 and 2. And it read, reads, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And the manner in which we are to give is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, in the verses 6 and 7. And it reads, But this I say, he was so sparingly should reap also sparingly. And he was so bountifully, should reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. I have Brother Powell to pray for the offering. Let us pray. Father, Father, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to go out and labor, that you bless us a job to bring back a portion of our earning back to you. We pray, O Lord, that we use the upkeep of thy kingdom and most of the spread in the gospel. Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Also, the manner of which we uh, can give here is found online on Givelify, credit card donations, Zelle, and Cash App. Thank you. A close hymn song being number uh, 205. Uh, 205. Once again, closing hymn song, 205. Have it, last thing. This life is filled with sorrow and troubles here below. We all thought made to wonder just why it should be so. In every tribulation, this life must bring to view. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh, Lord, we need a Savior friend upon this weary, weary road. We need someone to guide us, Lord, and share our heavy, heavy load. We need someone to love us, Lord, and tell us what to what to do, oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we know you travel the road to Jerry, Jericho, and help the lonely pilgrim. The Bible tells me so. When earthly friends forsake us and all the world seems, world seems blue, oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a savior friend upon this weary, weary road. We need someone to guide us or then share a heavy, heavy load. We need some Someone to love us, Lord, and tell us what to what to do. Oh no, Lord, we need a friend like you. They say that many trials will come to vex the vex the soul. The clouds will often gather 
till them for us to go in every sad condition to lead us safely, safely through. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a savior friend upon this weary, weary road. We need someone to guide us, sword and share a heavy, heavy load. We need someone to love us, sword and tell us what to, what to do. Oh, no, we need a friend like you. Amen. Amen. Let's have our closing prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for creating this day that we worship, worship you in spirit and in truth. We thankful that we were able to get up this morning in good health to assemble ourselves to be amongst uh, other saints that we can worship you. And we thank you, Lord, for carrying us through this week that today, that is, which is a joyful day, that the weather is beautiful and everybody is in good spirits. We are thankful for the, the word that was preached today by Brother Moore, and we are thankful for his words that was manifested through his heart to preach unto us. We're thankful for him and his family, Lord, and we continue to pray for his family and his wife and, and all his children. And Lord, we pray for the saints that are here, Lord, and we, we are thankful that they're here. Continue to strengthen us, Lord, as we go through our day-to-day -day lives throughout this week, Lord. And we're thankful for the health that you've given us, the food and the shelter that you've given unto us in this changing world. We pray for the world itself, Lord, the people that are doing your work and your will, the people that are war-torn and, and that don't have the luxuries that we have uh, having a place to worship. And we're thankful for all the many blessings that you bestowed upon us, Lord. And we love you so much. May you continue to be in us as we are in you. In Jesus' name we pray. And also we want to pray for uh, Sister Powell on her traveling grace this upcoming Wednesday as she uh, goes to her aunt's funeral. Um, we want to pray for her and all the other saints that are um, dealing with other adversities in life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.